vector B, and this is vector C, and therefore uh, this is A minus B, and this one is B minus C, and uh, this one is C minus A, or what is it? Yeah. or plus or minus, doesn't matter. The fact that the sum of these three quantities is zero tells us that if two of these values are zero, so is the third. Now interpret these uh, a, b, and c as uh, vectors, uh, the addition and subtraction is normal factor addition and subtraction. And for the uh, multiplication, we take the scalar product, which has all the distribution and um, symmetry properties. And therefore, if, one, if two of these terms are zero, the third is zero. That is, if two of these factors are uh, orthogonal to the opposite side, so is the third. I was very thrilled when I saw this simple calculational argument that the altitudes of a triangle go through a single point. I can leave that. Now the steps become a little bit smaller because my next thrill I had in 1951, and I'm glad to report it here, not only because I got the thrill in Cambridge, but even more so because the author of the thrill is in my audience. Um, one of the annoyances of my high school years was that I had several tables of logarithms. I had even an old, very thick, high precision one, which had been inherited, which uh, inherited from my mother. And I had played lots with it, and I knew what, what, uh, how you could use uh, a logarithm table at good advantage. Uh, but no one could give me very clear indications of how several centuries earlier those logarithm, logarithmic tables had been computed. The rumor was that uh, people knew that the logarithm of 1 was 0, and the logarithm of 10 was 1, and hence the logarithm of the square root of 10 was 0.5, and so on. Yeah? Anti-logarithms was a term that we... And the suggestion was that by repeated ex computations of square roots, numbers with known logarithms had been computed, and that as a result from, uh, with interpolation, the logarithmic tables had been formed. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, now, that, humor, that, that rumor is correct. Um, I knew how to compute square roots with pencil and paper, and it was a process that I didn't like at all. Uh, I realized that if you were going to do this your life, that you would get a certain proficiency in it, but uh, it sounded most unattractive. And then, uh, in Cambridge, where I was introduced to programming, uh, there was a lovely little booklet, and that lovely little booklet um, also contained a number of subroutines. And as a matter of fact, it, it contained two subroutines to compute the logarithm. 
lo and behold, here was, here was an algorithm using multiplications and very modest things only um, that just could compute an isolated logarithm. And I looked and I was very excited. And I will show it to you in decimal, although uh, the ADSEC being the ADSEC that it was, uh, it did it of course in binary, which has further advantages. What do we know of the logarithm, the decimal logarithm of a number? Well, the integer part, you see, because uh, from here till there, the logarithm starts with zero comma something. And from 10 to uh, 100, they start with 1 comma something. And from 100 to 2,000, it is 2 comma something. Yeah? And uh, then it's 3 comma something. That is, for a number less than 10 to the 10th, we see the leading digit of the logarithm at a glance. Now suppose that we wish to compute an arbitrary logarithm, logarithm of 2. We wish to compute logarithm of 2. Yeah? Well, uh, the logarithm of 2, well, start with 0. Yeah. Yeah. A, B, C, etc. Now everybody who has ever programmed for a binary machine on a level at which you needed to know that it was a binary machine and wanted to write a routine that, given the binary representation of a fraction, would give you the decimal representation of that function. He knows how, how to compute the digits A, B, C in succession. You see, A is quite simply the entier, the first digit, yeah? If, if this number is x, uh, then the first digit behind the comma is uh, the entier of 10 times x. So in order to, um, we define that a that we are looking for as the entier of 10 times the logarithm, logarithm of 2. But that is clearly the entier of the logarithm of 2 to the 10th. But that we can compute. This is the entier of the logarithm of 1024. And since 1024 is in uh, that range, start has four digits before the comma, the logarithm of, three start, uh, of 2 starts with 3. OK. So. Uh, and then, then you remove that and, and ask your question, what is the B? Well, in the meantime, the removal of that 3, now you have to raise 1,024 to the nth power, and then you'll discover that you are uh, still under 10, so it is 0. Yeah? And that number, again, you raise to the 10th power, and then you discover that you are just above 10. Yeah? And the decimals of the logarithm 2, 3, uh, 0, 3.